HTML elements have opening tags like h1 and closing tags like closing h1. Find the h1 element and change its text to Catch Photo App. Make sure the text is between its opening and closing tags. Okay. So, like, like Island Boy, Island just read for us. It has opening and closing tags. So this would be the opening tag right here, but I have highlighted, and this will be the closing. And in between this H1 element is the contact we're going to write. So I'm going to change Hello World to Cat Photo App, and we're going to check. Pass the first test. Now let's go to the next one. All right, step two. The H1 to H6 headings elements are used to signify the importance of content below them. The lower the number, the higher the importance. So H2 elements have less importance than H1 elements. Only use the H1 element per page and place lower importance headings below higher important headings. Below the H1 element, Add an H2 element with this text, cat photos. All right. So in this, in this exercise, we're going to go in there and create our first H2 element. So cat photo. check it once we have it all typed up the p element is used to create a paragraph of text on websites create a p element below your h2 element and give it the following text click here to view more cat photos okay more cat photos so right now i'm making a p element Just copy and paste. We're making progress, we're making progress. <laughs> Check the globe below. So as you can see, it's very um, simple so far. Just the basic concept we gotta remember is our opening and closing tags and knowing which one we're going to use. All right, step four. Commenting allows you to leave messages without affecting the browser display. It also allows you to make code in inactive. A comment in HTML starts with um, less than exclamation mark dash dash contains any number of lines of code of text and ends with dash dash greater than sign for example the comment less than explanation mark dash dash to do uh, colon I believe yeah removes h1 and dash dash less than contains the text to do colon remove h1 add a comment above the P element with this text to do colon add link to cat photos. So right here is just so it'll be to do. And a short a uh, cool shortcut that I use by habit that is interesting to remember is you can actually be easy just to hit command backslash or for Windows control backslash. Nice step. Thank you.
Yeah, I honestly did not even know that myself. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, like, yeah, that's, yeah. I'll read this one. HTML5 has some elements that identify different content areas. These elements make your HTML easier to read and help with search engine optimization, SEO, and accessibility. Identify the main section of this page by adding a main element opening tag after the H1 element and a closing main tag after the P element. So in this session, we're just going to identify the main section of the page. All right, after the H1 element. So after the closing H1 element, And then, and then to end this main section, be going after the P element. So it'll be down here. And just putting in a closing main. All right. That should do it. Yeah, some uh, tip tidbit I learned not um, was to to make it a little bit easier. Try to indent it by pressing the space bar twice. That way, it, it'd be a lot easier to read. Um, because right, what we just did is a, a process called nesting. Uh, we just nested the main into the H1 header, and now that main is a child to H1. And you, we'll get to that later along the line of what that means. But r right now, just trying to um, indent to make it a lot, a lot better to read, easier to read. Okay, step six. In the previous step, you nested the well, like like <laughs> like I was just saying, you nested the H two element comment and P element within the main element. A nested element is a child of its parent element. It should be indented two more spaces than its parent element to improve readability like this. And it gives you the example like right here. So it gives you that example. We're already one step ahead. <laughs> <laughs> add, two, <laughs> add two spaces in front of the three elements of main so your HTML L is more readable. So adding two spaces in front of the, of the three child elements. So one, two, one, two, one, two. There we go. Oh, like, like I was saying before, it makes a lot readable, um, be able to read a lot better. Because when you have going in there and looking at a web page and you have a thousand lines of code and they all indented, um, all non-ended it, it makes it very confusing to figure out where you're at in <coughs> in the web page. All right, step seven. You can add images to your website by using the image element. Image elements have an opening tag without a closing tag. A tag for an element without a closing tag is known as a self-closing tag. Add an image element below the P element. At this point, no image will show up in the browser. Okay. Okay. We're adding an image element right below the P. So right here is already done, but you would just... And then click up, check it, and then there you go. Close this out. All right, step eight. HTML element, uh, HTML attributes are special words used inside the opening tag of an element to control the element's behavior. The source attribute is an image element specifies the image's URL. 
where the image is located. An example of an image element using an source attribute be right here would be image source equals https wwwyourimage image dash source dot com backslash your image your dot image dot jpg and okay so gives an example right here and inside the existing image element, add a source attribute with this URL. So, like in the example, so we'll have to sources to add a source. We'll just open the, go inside the image element, and right beside it, S R C set it equals and then just copy and paste this because that'll be our image that we're going to display copy and paste or if you want to code on hardcore mode you can try and type out every character <laughs> <laughs> I mean if you want only if you want it. If, you're, um, if you're playing on hard settings <laughs> Yeah, and I, I copied and pasted, but remember to put it in parentheses. Um, that way, like, like without those parentheses, it will not show up. It will not display like that. So adding in those parentheses. And seeing it up there, that's a sure way you'll, you'll know that it's running and you have the right source code. So... Click enter. No, we pass. Okay. Step. Step nine. All image elements should have an ALT attribute. The ALT attributes text is used for screen readers to improve accessibility and is displayed if the image fails to load. For example, here's an example here. You can see the alt is a cat has a ATL attribute with the text a cat. So if the picture doesn't load, we'll say a cat there. Inside the image element, add an ALT attribute with this text, a cute orange cat lying on his back. So. So right beside the source, be a L and then equal parentheses remember and copy and paste a cute orange cat lying on his back copy that paste it in there and then let's see if we got that right uh -uh. sure did all right step 10 you can link to another page with the anchor A element. For example, and they have the um, example right here, A href equals uh, https freecodecamp.org and it will link to a freecodecamp.org. Sorry, here. So in this exercise, add an X, an acre element after the paragraph that links to HTTPS free, free cat photo app .com. At this point, the link won't show up in the preview. Add an anchor element. Mm -hmm. Like 
I always get confused on these acres. I thought like the anchor was supposed to go, supposed to nest inside the P element, like a source. At oh, the beginning, yeah. like yeah, no, but I could be wrong. I think I'm wrong. I think I'm yeah, wrong. I usually yeah, when I see the for this challenge, the first thing I was thinking is that he would nest the paragraph inside of it because with the A element, you have to have something that's like clickable. Mm -hmm. But in this example, it seems like we're just having a random floating A element mm -hmm. that's not really clickable at the moment. Testing. Oh, <laughs> didn't pass. Oh, Let's yeah, see what I did wrong. Hmm. Oh, oh, I see. You just um the the href URL link have to be in the the beginning tag. You didn't close the beginning tag off. Oh, so like right here uh, before the start of the closing tag you should have a closing um, or a greater than uh, a greater than um, symbol oh yeah alright I see yeah cause it's not yeah. closing right now I see yeah alright Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, drop the space. Mm -hmm. so go back to not the space and the link. Yeah, so space and link makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Closing tag at the end of the A two. All right, now now we should be good. Hopefully. Yeah. Right, we in business. Yeah. <laughs> Having a partner to help you out is tremendously helpful. You know, having second eyes to help you out. Yeah. And it also helps you keep you motivated to code when you have, like, a partner or you in a group or just basically in, like, a Discord session, you know, all y'all collaborating on a group project. It helps you out. Um, you can be able to help each other out in the long run and keep each other motivated. That way you don't get burnt out or tired or be like, oh, this is too hard, you know, like that. You know, and give up easy, you know. You always have someone there to help you out. Like yeah. Brian here. <laughs> yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of different um, challenges like coding. And sometimes, like, even small errors can be overlooked by you when you're, like, in the code in a moment. Somebody can come along and just, like, see that there's, like, one missing symbol. Or me personally, I know I usually miss, like, S's on some names and things. 